Hey y'all, it is finally summer's end and we're transitioning into fall and it makes me think of chow chow, the end of the summer and you get everything out of your garden that's left and you chop it all up and you pickle it and it's chow chow. And growing up, I always heard it called southern chow chow, but I hate to put such a, a mark on it because you can, it can be northern chow chow, it can be chow chow enjoyed around the world so i thought that we would call our chow chow summer's end chow chow or i don't know y'all might come up with a better name y'all are really good at that so y'all just let me know what you think about what kind of chow chow to call it um traditionally it was started back when you didn't waste a thing y'all know you know the good old days and so you would use anything and everything you had left in your garden if you didn't have enough for a whole meal or a whole canning session you just put it all together and pickled it and so it was it's loved though it's so very loved um some things that i like to put in it is a head of cabbage i like to put green bell pepper and red bell pepper you could put yellow bell pepper i like to put these big old vidalia georgia onions y'all know i didn't grow that and green tomatoes and they don't even have to be totally green and I didn't have any tomatoes left in my garden no I did not so I went up to Big Star right here in Farmerville and look at here they sell green tomatoes year-round and I love that you can buy them and slice them and fry them they're so very good so that's where I get those um, so I got some of those some things you uh, else you can put in there I like to put cucumber I don't have any cucumbers today but if you do you could and squash and zucchini are very good in here and John and I we like our chow chow a little bit spicy if you don't you don't have to put it but y'all know y'all helped me plant jalapenos this year and even though the garden has quit this year and the summer has come to an end those jalapenos are still a making and just like I told y'all you got to go in the house and shut the door on those jalapenos but we are going to go back out that door and we're going to go get some jalapenos together real quick and I'll show you how they're still growing and then we'll come back in here and we'll start chopping cricket girl are you going to help us with our jalapenos y'all see little spider lilies popped up out here in the garden <laughs> Seriously guys, y'all see this garden, it's all grown over and the sunflowers are dried and I'm feeding those to the chickens and everything and I kid you not, this little jalapeno is loaded, he is loaded and they're all in here, all amongst the weeds, they don't care, they just keep on a making. <laughs> we could learn a lot from a jalapeno plant, couldn't we? I think we could too. Cricket, you gonna help me pluck a few of these, girl? I think some green ones would be pretty, but I think some red ones in there would be beautiful. What you think, Cricket? She says, yeah, Mama, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so, too. Sure do. You gonna scratch me, girl? You little squirt. Are you a squirt? Poor little jalapenos, they're just going to have to get a frost before they quit growing. That won't be long, will it, Cricket? Sure won't. Alright, these are just a conglomeration of little jalapenos. And mine are teeny tiny pieces, so first I'm going to cut that stem off the end there. And you can seed them or you cannot seed them. I am going to seed them a bit because I don't want them to just, I don't want this relish to just burn us up, you know, you know, just like that. And then we'll chop them. Did y'all know that jalapenos, the hotter it gets in the summer and the drier it gets is the hotter your jalapeno gets so in the first of the spring when they first start growing they'll be kind of mild flavored and you'll think well these aren't real hot and then toward the end of the summer when it's real dry and hot outside they get really hot <laughs> so just remember that it's hard to gauge 
how many jalapenos you might just have to taste it and see how hot they are right now and I mince these really small so we won't get a big old bite of jalapeno in there it kind of just a seasoning more does that make sense that's what I'm gonna do with those and y'all see I got some pretty red ones from out there too I love how they look in the chow chow and they're wonderful to make pepper jelly with and oh my goodness I don't know if I'm gonna have time to do that this year and many of you want me to and I have many years and I love it because it's so pretty at Christmas time and all the holidays gathering you can put it over a block of cream cheese but I don't know we just have to see guys I I'm all time mention and stuff I just don't have any more time and none of y'all giving me a recipe for time yet <laughs> Because I need more time. Do y'all need more time? Yes, me too. Okay, guys, and then on the green tomatoes, um, I do core them a bit. You don't have to get, you know, terribly proper with it, but that little end that shows that stem piece, I will get rid of it. And then that's what, it, this is what I want to talk to you about. You can cut chow chow as chunky or as small a bites as you want. That's totally up to you. I've even seen it done in a food processor where you just pulse it, you know, till it gets really small. I don't do it in the food processor because it gets a little watery on you, but you can do it that way and it's gonna taste good. Um, also, I actually enjoy chopping. And I know that sounds weird to some, but some that know get it. We just like it. It's very therapeutic just to stand here and just chop away or sit and chop. It's very therapeutic. I know. I know. To y'all that don't get it, y'all are like, okay. <laughs> so anyway, that's what I'm doing. I kind of like mine in small tidbits. So because we're going to put it on top of peas mostly is what we do. So I do like mine to be small bits, okay? About like that. Same thing with the bell peppers. One just took off down on the floor for me. Mm -hmm. I'll have to wash him again, won't I? Yes, I will. This is a good thing to save if you don't want to put it in there freeze it and put it in your chicken stocks for like gumbo mm-hmm yes but we're gonna stick it on in there I love the color of the red I love the sweetness of the red too just like that and how I do a bell pepper I'll cut the tip end off too of course I can chop that and then You've got that center part that's got all the seeds on it, and I'll go down each side just like this, right in the center, and cut that just like that. And then I can pull this whole piece out just like that that's got all the seeds on it. It's how I do it. But that's just how I do it. There's no right, there's no wrong. Then I make me some little sticks, just like that, and you can come back across them and cut them as small as you want to, just like that. Just be sure to keep your fingers tucked like this, so you won't slice into your fingers. Keep them tucked, keep them tucked, just like that. And that dices up our bell pepper, just like that, nice and pretty. And then the onion. Let's see here. I'm going to cut each tip end of my onion off. I got my garbage bowl over here. Or Rachel Ray, y'all know it had to be purple, didn't you? <laughs> right? They were like, no, Amy, we had no idea it was going to be purple. I got an orange one inside and John took it over in the kitchen and he likes to make those big old cathead biscuits in it. But he knows it's a Rachel Ray garbage bowl, so he'll say, Baby, where's where's that, uh, what does he call it? GB bowl. And I'll say, you're saying garbage bowl, bowl. And he'll say, yeah, yeah, where is it? <laughs> so 
I'm like, I still don't think you get it. <laughs> but anyway, he's a goofus, isn't he? A goofus. I wasn't even telling y'all what I was doing on this onion. I'll do it on the next one with y'all. I'll tell you. All right, I'm tucking my fingers in as I'm chopping across like that. And this little piece in, it's got some of the core in it. So I'm going to chunk it. And if you love, love, love onion, put more onion in there. Like I say, you can make this your own recipe. If you don't like onion at all, you don't have to put two big ones. All right, I'll start on this end. Y'all saw I cut it in half. And I put my hand like this with my fingers up so I won't slice into it. And I'm going to cut almost all the way through several times, several layers like that. Y'all see that? And then I'm going to come back this way and chop down almost all the way to the back of it again. And now, we're going to go across all of those cuts we just made, and that's how we're dicing our tomato. Our tomato. That's how we're dicing our onion. Oh, boy. Tomato. Hmm. Amy. And, y'all, that is pretty well all of my veggies, except for my cabbage. Because I don't have a cucumber. If I did, that would sure go in there. Because I love a cucumber in here. But, more or less, everything gets pickled and kind of just tastes the same, to be totally honest about it. So, now my cabbage, you know, everything else is nice and small little dice. So, I like to do the same thing with cabbage. So, you'll be chopping a while. Just more or less kind of shred on it like that and then you come back and you'll chop some more let me chop down in there some more get me even smaller pieces yeah just like that I'm gonna get through all my chopping and then we'll move on to the next step guys hey y'all saved me a piece of cabbage to eat I love raw cabbage do y'all Y'all look at this big old thing. <laughs> right. I'm just going to toss it about with y'all. And this is a church night. And I don't even know what time it is. Let me check, guys. Hmm. Hmm. Yep, I got to quit and get into town. I've got some errands to run before I go to church. It's Wednesday night. So, what I'm going to do, and this is something you can do or not do. I have made chow chow and not done this step. And I made chow chow and done this step. And this time we're going to do it. That's just too ridiculous. I'm just going to toss this like this. And let y'all see what pretty beautiful, beautiful colors this is. And... I want to put some salt on this and we'll cover it with plastic and let it be wilting overnight. And like I say, if you don't want to do this step, don't. Because I'm not either. Okay? You don't have to. But I'm going to. This time, just because. Just because. Just because. I need to stop. So this is a stopping point if you need to stop too. And I'm going to put... Let's see here. If I can find my tablespoon... There it is. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yeah. Let's put some pickling salt. We don't have to. But since we got this big old box, <laughs> we will. Um, I'm going to put a couple of tablespoons of this pickling or cannon salt on the top. And this is just going to start sweating out our veggies and wilting them down. But there's been many times that I started this and I was able to just mix up my pickling and get it cooking in the pot and can it up. So you don't have to do this, but this is a good time for me to stop. So I've already said that. I know. I know. I repeat myself over and over and over. I know I do. Let's see, guys. Isn't it pretty? 
it already smells wonderfully glorious glorious yes it does but it's going to get better and better and better y'all see how this is so good on hot dogs and hamburgers and pulled pork sandwiches and peas okay one more one more rinse let me grab some plastic wrap here we go and this does need to go in the refrigerator now it can't sit out here no it can't and I'm probably gonna have to clean out my refrigerator a little bit too <laughs> oh goodness our refrigerator in the house went out this weekend and I had, was having the whole family over what well, went out earlier in the week and I was having the whole family over and the grandbabies for the weekend I thought what a great time but it always picks those great times don't it yeah it does so anyway we got it delivered Saturday they delivered it we ran to Rustin and ordered it and uh, got it delivered and they delivered it and I threw a few cold things back into it out of an ice chest and then we headed off to get the grandbaby Saturday so it was wild and woolly but we got it done and I was thankful we had another one. <laughs> yes, I yes I am. There was a day we didn't have enough money. John would have to go get us like a little bit old two hundred dollar refrigerator, and I would literally cook Christmas and Thanksgiving out of it, and that little thing would be bulging. It sure would like a cartoon refrigerator. Okay, guys, covered with plastic, and I, we'll let this sit overnight, and I'll get back on here with y'all tomorrow, and we will pickle this up and have us some chow chow for the winter. See y'all then okay guys we are back and it is time to get our chow chow pickle didn't it um first thing we're going to need is some white vinegar just like this i think it's five percent acidity yes we're gonna need 12 cups so i'm gonna start pouring this in this is 10 cups i'm gonna need two more 11 and 12 there we go and now to that I'm also going to add um, eight cups of water and remember you're not going to add as much water as vinegar because our veggies have also got water in them too don't they our pretty veggies okay now we need 12 cups of sugar to match our 12 cups of water that is some of it I think that's eight cups and this is four white granulated sugar there we go get y'all down here and show y'all these beautiful veggies that we've been had sweating and remember you do not have to do this step it's just what I did so I could go to church last night aren't these beautiful I think so too they whipped it down a bit and the juices that are in there I leave so that's why I'm saying it's not necessary to uh, do that but I wanted to just because I wanted to go to church and get me some Jesus last night yes I did all right let's see here I put all my spices here on this little pie rack so I could get over here and show y'all what all we're gonna put over in here um, First thing we're going to start with is four tablespoons of pickling spice. I've got a piece of a container left. And I'm going to tell you what all is in pickling spice. And I'm also probably going to do a separate video. And we'll make some homemade pickling spice. Okay, guys? It's got cinnamon, allspice, mustard seed, coriander, bay leaves, ginger, chilies, cloves, black pepper, mace, cardamom. So it's a one-stop shop and i love it and i hope you can find it in the stores this is mccormick's and it's just pickling spice and so it's got you don't have to open a ton of containers but i need four tablespoons and i do generous tablespoons yes i do went in the store and they still had some left and so i grabbed up me four more containers let's see two 
three, four. There we go. I gave a little extra for good measure. <laughs> put that on the bottom. All right, pickle and spice, y'all get out of my way. Then I love to put turmeric. It makes a beautiful color. Plus, turmeric is so good for us. And let's put about one tablespoon of turmeric. You can make it generous, and if you don't want to use it, that's fine too. All right, turmeric, let's get out of there. There we go. Lay him down since we've already done him, and we're going to put some ground mustard in there, and that's also two tablespoons. And if you do not have ground mustard, don't sweat that. Just use some regular yellow mustard out of your refrigerator. Um, Y'all know what I'm talking about, so don't don't sweat it. I, I hope you don't sweat any of my recipes because there's always something you can substitute or something you can do without, right? I'm going to put two tablespoons of ground mustard just like that. And because, like I told y'all, John and I love it to be just a little bit spicy, I'm going to put some crushed red pepper flakes, and that is totally up to you. Whether you want to do that or not, if you don't want to, that's perfectly fine. And I'm going to put just one tablespoon of those. Just like that. And I believe that's it. Oh, and we're, we'll put some more salt. Yes, we will. I'm going to dig this canning salt back out. Pickling and canning salt. And y'all know we sprinkled a couple of tablespoons over it. So that's totally up to you how much salt. But I'm going to put... A nice generous tablespoon of this in here too and I'll taste it and if I think it needs more fine but I bet it doesn't with all those other beautiful spices all right y'all I am going to turn the fire on and get this going get this out of the way for us yeah, I need to home make some pickling spice with y'all guys because we can't always find that in the store, can we? I don't know if I'll do that this year because pickling season is going to be over for me with this, but I do need to do that. Maybe I could at least put it in the recipe, homemade pickling spice. That's what I'll do. Sure will. I'm going to bring this to a boil and let this all get... dissolved I guess is the word I'm looking for and then I'm gonna add all my veggies it's got nice and warm and my sugar's dissolved so let's start putting all these veggies in Woo! that side of that pan got hot right there the best way is just use your hands to get that in there isn't this beautiful looks like Christmas doesn't it I know it see how pretty gosh that's pretty so pretty and it already smells so good. <laughs> I'm going to have to have a little bowl of this before we even can it. Yes, I am. Yes, I am, guys. I am. I know y'all don't blame me. There we go. Not one little chopped guy is going to not go into that. We worked too hard, didn't we? We sure did. Alright y'all, let me show you what this looks like. Let me get my hands cleaned off real quick. Get y'all right over in that pot. Doesn't that look pretty? I know it. Alright guys, we're going to cover this and we're going to let this cook for about 45 minutes to an hour and then it's going to be ready to can. And y'all see this is in my canning pot because it was so much. So. I'm going to have to be sticking little jars and some little pots around on the stove, but we'll make it work. We'll get it done, won't we? Do y'all see this glorious chow chow boiling away? It's been boiling like that for an hour at least. Isn't that pretty? I think so too. I'm going to turn off the fire now. Show y'all. See how it just melts down and wilts down in there? Isn't that beautiful? I think so too. Yes, I do. And it's so full of flavor. Let's see. I'm going to back y'all back up if I can figure out which direction to go. <laughs> oh my. Oh my. Right. 
I want to show you all these beautiful jars I also got at Thomas Nursery when I was buying my prickly pear jelly jars in that beautiful you see how it's it's got all these angles like is it an octagon two four six eight yes and it's so pretty I just think they're beautiful and they're um, quart jars so they'll hold a good bit and I thought they would be so beautiful every time I start with this because if you don't know you don't know so you can get these canning sets they'll come with this and a little stick with a magnet on the end of it where you can pick up your canning jar lids and a, a wide mouthed funnel and it also comes with a little measure that'll show you how much head space you need for any recipe so that's perfect and don't put these in the hot water to get your jars out like Amy did I did and those those came off into my hot water after a while <laughs> yeah they did they did they did okay guys my chow chow was so full I had to put it so much of it I had to put it over in my canner my actual canner pot so having to use a smaller pot for our cans but that's okay All right, I've got my hot jar, and I'm gonna put my funnel over in here. That helps you keep the rims semi-clean, so you don't have a big old mess. And then I'm just simply gonna start scooping out, and I kind of strain it just a bit because I want to get lots and lots of the chow chow first. Oh, I wish I could get y'all to smell this. My goodness, it smells so wonderful gonna be so good on some peas tonight <laughs> yes it is you know we've got to eat some tonight yes we do beautiful let's see I'm gonna kind of rattle that around and we've got a little bit more space so I'm gonna do a little more space and I'll start adding some juice in here as well. Let's see here. I also got this in a can and set. You see it's got that little hook and it just kind of hooks onto the lip of your pot. I love that. It just sits there waiting on you. Okay. Now I'm going to get back to him. He's got some head space, meaning the space between where your lid's going to sit up here and between there so it's got enough where it will seal and stay sealed if you've got it all the way to the top it cannot stay sealed so one way to make sure your rim is good and clean is to put some vinegar on a clean towel and I just whoo that is some kind of hot I need another clean towel to twist that y'all see this just like that and let me fish out a lid right over here keeping it in hot water you need to boil your little jars and your lids for 10 minutes and that way they're nice and sterilized all right now I'll use that just to pop that on there another thing that I want to stress to you is um only tighten this fingertip tight okay just like that okay and don't come back and tighten it down tighter or anything like that leave it just like that it'll be just fine my grandmother would actually remove these twist tops after they sealed and um she would use them on other jars but i like to leave mine on there i just think it looks a little better i want to get this up here for y'all and show y'all how beautiful isn't that beautiful I think so too. Woo! And hot. <laughs> Alright guys, I'm going to keep on going. Alright, I've got my hot jar and I'm going to put my funnel over in here. That helps you keep the rims semi-clean so you don't have a big old mess. And then I'm just simply going to start scooping out. And I kind of strain it just a bit because I want to get lots and lots of the chow chow first. Oh, I wish I could get y'all to smell this. My goodness, it smells so wonderful. It's going to be so good on some peas tonight. 
Yes, it is. You know we've got to eat some tonight. Yes, we do. Beautiful. Let's see. I'm going to kind of rattle that around. And we've got a little bit more space, so I'm going to do a little more space. And I'll start adding some juice in here as well. Let's see here. I also got this in a can and set. You see it's got that little hook and it just kind of hooks onto the lip of your pot. I love that. It just sits there waiting on you. Okay, now I'm going to get back to him. He's got some head space, meaning the space between where your lid's going to sit up here and between there. So it's got enough where it will seal and stay sealed. If you've got it all the way to the top, it cannot stay sealed. So one way to make sure your rim is good and clean is to put some vinegar on a clean towel. And I just, whoo, that is some kind of hot. I need another clean towel to twist that. Y'all see this? Just like that. And let me fish out a lid right over here. Keeping it in hot water. You need to boil your little jars and your lids for 10 minutes. And that way they're nice and sterilized. Alright, and I'll use that just to pop that on there. Another thing that I want to stress to you is um, only tighten this fingertip tight, okay? Just like that, okay? And don't come back and tighten it down tight or anything like that. Leave it just like that. It'll be just fine. My grandmother would actually remove these twist tops after they sealed, and um, she would use them on other jars, but I like to leave mine on there. I just think it looks a little better. I want to get this up here for y'all and show y'all how beautiful. Isn't that beautiful? I think so too. Woo! And hot. <laughs> Alright guys, I'm going to keep on going.